Hello, hello, hello. This is Fred, your agronomist and a farmer. And uh, as you can see, I'm sandwiched between two tall varieties. For those uh, running greenhouse uh, varieties, farming in the greenhouse can understand this. Under good management, the taller the variety, the good the production. Remember, uh, the production is from the bottom to where it is at the moment. And uh, this uh, production has been my core thing. Production has been my main thing in training because that's what we are looking at. Um, good production, a good crop, healthy crop. As you can see, the crop is is quite old. It's old, and it's still producing. It's producing very well. And I wanted to to give you some few tips, some few managerial uh, things you need to observe as a as a greenhouse farmer, or as a farmer who is doing capsicum. Also, they can be applied in, in open field, but mostly. Greenhouse farmers face uh, more challenges as compared to uh, to open field farmers. So, when you are doing greenhouse farming, remember this crop stays in a greenhouse for more than eight months. Sometimes it can go for even uh, to one year. So, what do you need to know, or what do you need to do? One. You must know or you must be able to identify different pests and diseases. In my past videos, I've shared all this training, how to identify these uh, pests and diseases. On pests, you must know to identify the, the mites, red spider mites. You must know how to identify drips, different drips. You must know how to identify uh, the, the, the cutworms and you must know how to identify any other pest that attacks uh, capsicum. But the most disturbing capsicum uh, pest is one red spider mite which attacks the capsicum, uh, it attacks the under leaf of the capsicum. And it's very disturbing. It comes, it can transmit viral diseases. The other uh, disturbing pest is drips. It's seen on the on the uh, flower part of the capsicum. In most cases, that way we see it. It's also a very disturbing uh, pest. So you need you, you need to know how to identify it. You can go to my previous videos. I've already covered all these things and see how you identify them and how to know this is what is attacking you but uh, my approach is always preventive always be a, a preventive farmer work with prevention more than uh, seeing them or curing them prevent the, 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 the mites or red spider mite prevent the drips from attacking you uh, and in that case now you need one to, uh, to to install the traps in order the, the, the red, the, the blue and the yellow traps. These are identification tool and also uh, the control tools. And uh, from that, you use uh, products that, uh, you use product that will enable you control uh, or be able to control the, the, the pest, either present or absent. If they are absent, they will prevent them from entering. If they are present at a lower uh, lower population, they will be able to be controlled. From there, identify different diseases. Among them is uh, podale mildew. Another one is downy mildew. And the lack nose. Uh, for podale mildew, it attacks during hot and uh, less humid or no humid condition. For downy mildew, it attacks when it's 
very cold and very humid so you need to know all these conditions i've shared the same trainings in my other video so uh, kindly check uh, my previous videos on uh, uh, greenhouse capsicum farming it also lies on the open field farming so you need to know all these things and once you know these things this will enable you now to curb them and to have a healthy and a long uh, life crop free from diseases free from pests and last but not least it lies on the nutrition and this is the topic that i'm going to emphasize today uh majorly to emphasize on that because this is where everything now lies for nutrition you need to know which nutrient to apply at what stage when planting you need to know that at that stage we, we need phosphorus rich fertilizer why phosphorus rich fertilizer is, is in order to increase the root network and also to make sure the plant grows uh, growth is healthy at a uh, vegetative stage you need to know uh, you now need a nitrogenous fertilizer and at flower setting and fruiting you need uh, a calcium fertilizer boron zinc fertilizer or foliar in all these stages we also do foliars you can do uh, when planting you can also use a uh, 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 phosphorus rich foliar as you use the base of fertilizer we start with manure then base of fertilizer phosphorus then uh, foliars then when you apply a granule foliar or uh, for those who are doing uh, hydroponics the solution with high nitrogen foliar you can also do uh, sorry the the solution uh, the liquid solution then you can use the foliar then boron zinc and calcium base or a solution then the foliar and uh, now this is where the big challenge comes in and it has been a question uh, that has you've been asking me when harvesting what are we supposed to do and this we are farmers tend to forget a lot because they are of the, i think they become of excited because of the production so when harvesting you also need to combine the foliage remember at harvesting stage, you are removing the fruits. You need a uh, good uh, leaves formation. You need continuous formation of flowers and fruit setting. So there are many activities that are happening in this crop. And I uh, remember I have given you the circles or the sequence of fertilizer application. So at this stage, you need now to be able to balance all these nutrients to make sure uh, the, the plant has good nitrogen, balanced nitrogen, not very high nitrogen, because when the nitrogen is very high, it will produce less, uh, less flowers. It will form um, leaves at expense of flowers. At the same time, you need uh, flowers, formation product, and if you apply the flower formation product alone, it may end, and that is boron, it may end up aborting because it has got, it's weak, it, got, it has no leaves, it has, it's, uh, it has no other nutrient to support the fruit. I also need a product like zinc that will support the fruit and a calcium which now plays a major role in cell division, fruit formation, and also uh, maintaining uh, the, the plant. So you need a balance of this, of this nutrient. And uh, I usually advise my farmers, because you know, remember, the, sometimes we don't have the test kit to know uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, nutrient the crop is demanding at a certain stage. So what we do, uh, we usually, I usually advise farmers to do a weekly uh, application of fertilizers or after every fortnight, apply fertilizers. Make sure you balance them because at any given point, if you miss, uh, if the plant misses uh, a nutrient, you may end up not having flowers or not having uh, 
fruit at a certain stage and that is that will cost you because that means at a certain week you'll be out of market and remember we want to be consistent in production and so that we can keep the market remember the market will not wait for you for you to have fruit if a certain week you lack fruit they will run away from you and you start crying there is no market or uh, you're not making good money so the consistency is always uh, uh, the, the the game and the biggest secret and that this can be brought in by uh, balanced nutrient and uh, a well protected crop so uh, if you're able to do that i can assure you that you have a good cropping uh, a good crop and a successful crop which you'll make good money out of it and good returns and enjoy farming uh, if you have a question on capsicum farming don't uh, hesitate to ask uh, the question if uh, the training was informative to you if the training was good don't forget to like also to leave a comment not necessarily a question uh, also share this channel with other farmers let them subscribe so that you can be a big class and continue learning together bye